Good afternoon, Miss Siti. Yeah. Good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation. Okay. Yeah. And thanks for inviting me. So how is the condition in there in Malaysia? The schools, are they uh, already face-to-face uh, -face meeting? Yes, yes. Still already uh, open. Time for home? Uh -huh. Oh. Uh, already open, but uh, we have uh, what we call peng penggiliran. <clears throat> uh -uh, not all students uh, come to schools uh, at the same time. Mm, so like uh, we divide by two percent, groups. Uh, mm. Two groups. Yes. Uh, maybe uh, this week, uh, group A come to school and yes. uh, next week is group B. So uh, alternate. So from elementary to the junior, uh, senior high school, so they are doing that kind of strategy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Except uh, for uh, exam class. Uh, for SPM, we call SPM lah here. Mm, for SPM okay. class, uh, we don't have uh, any alternate class like that. Mm. <clears throat> okay, yeah. yeah. Hopefully, the condition is uh, getting better. Soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Saya pun baru sembuh daripada COVID. Oh. <laughs> baru saja. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. So, yeah. That also what happened in our office. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. everywhere. Banyak everywhere. Yang, yeah. Yeah. To... Okay, so yeah, Pak Luman, if uh, we're ready, I think we yeah. shall start. Okay. Okay, uh, thank you for everyone. Okay, so uh dear uh, participants, uh attention please. The Sigis webinar series bringing learning to life is about to begin.
We'll achieve our goals through partnership, creating opportunities by working hand in hand. We can accomplish all our dreams for a better quality of life. Is now within our reach. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to Simio Kitab in Science webinar series, Bringing Learning to Life. This webinar is Simio Kitab in Science initiative to provide teachers and education personnel with innovations and best practices in science education that can be implemented in teaching and learning activities. So, dear participants, let's move to the first agenda of this webinar, which is opening remarks by Mr. Reza Setiawan, the Deputy Director for a Program of Simio Kitab in Science. To Mr. Reza Setiawan, the floor is yours. Thank you, Pak Hikman, Honorable Miss Siti Ainul Morshida Binti Shamsuddin, our speaker for today's webinar. Honorable Mr. Lukman Al Hakim our Head of ICT Data and Evaluation Division as the moderator and distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good afternoon. I'm pleased to God the Almighty and the most merciful. Such a great pleasure to be able to speak with you, to welcome you cordially at our uh, opening ceremony of SIKIS webinar series, Bringing Learning to Life. Honorable ladies and gentlemen, Sikis webinar series is one of our activities with different and various teams aiming at enriching teachers and education personnel uh, knowledge with best practices and current issues related to science education. And as teacher, we have the unique privilege uh, to lead our classrooms. We have the ability, the autonomy and choice to influence and help our students to shape their opportunities for greater amounts of exploration and thinking to occur. As educational and school leaders, it is important to pause and remember that to bring learning to life means we need to have purpose, meaningful and clear connection of what is being learned by our students to previous and upcoming learning and also real world applications. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, by conducting this webinar, teachers are expected to develop knowledge and skills in a growing awareness of educational, community building, sustainability, as well as physical and mental health benefits of stepping outside the classroom. Teachers also need to identify several principles that bring learning to life in classroom, such as the purpose of learning activities and collaboration among students and with other parties in their communities in solving questions arising in learning activities. So in connection with this intention, we invite teachers across Southeast Asia to join this webinar. All the participants will get a great opportunity to learn 
about bringing learning to life from prominent experts. Our speaker today is Ms. Siti Ainul Mursida with the Sam Shudin. She is teacher from SMK Orchid Desa, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. I would like to give a sincere appreciation for her willingness to share experience and expertise with us today. Honorable distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, to conclude, let me express my sincere wish that Siki's webinar series will enrich your insights, knowledge in designing meaningful and interactive learning for uh, students. So for no further delay, it's now my pleasure to declare that Siki's webinar series, Bringing Learning to Life, is officially open. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Mr. Reza Stevan, for your opening remarks. Okay. And dear participants, uh, before we start the speaker's presentation, I would like to inform important information regarding this webinar. First, today there will be a speaker who will share her knowledge about science, teaching, and learning. The presenter will have 45 minutes for presentation and 15 to 30 minutes for discussion session. The discussion sessions will be after speaker's presentation. To ask questions during the discussion sessions, for participants who join this webinar on Zoom, you can type your questions on the chat box on the Zoom application. We will invite one or two selected participants to directly ask questions to the speaker, while other selected questions will be read by moderator. For participants who join this webinar on YouTube, please type your questions on YouTube chat box. I will read selected questions from the participants. And then to indicate your attendance for participants who join this webinar either on Zoom or YouTube, you can fill in online attendance form we'll, uh, that will be, uh, that will be uh, sent by the committee. The links of the attendance forms will be shared at the end of this webinar. So I suggest you keep joining this webinar until the end. Okay, everyone. Now we will move to the speaker's presentations. Miss Siti Ainul Morshida Binti Shamsuddin from Malaysia. Please allow me to introduce our speaker first. So uh, Miss Siti Ainul Morshida Binti Shamsuddin uh, works at SMK Orchid Desa Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. She already served about 14 years and many achievements uh, by her, uh, as, uh, such as a speaker of international webinar education during pandemic around the world, Asia. Also Special Education Outstanding Kuala Lumpur Teacher Award 2021, Kuala Lumpur Innovative Teacher Award for Secondary School 2021, National Home Learning Teacher Award 2021, and many more. I think later on, Miss uh, I know, uh, can uh, share more about our achievement. So now let's start our speaker's presentations. Uh, Miss Ainul Murshida, the floor is yours. Please. All right. Uh, thanks to Mr. Lokman Hakim, the moderators for webinar today. Uh, greetings and thank you to the... Uh, uh, Miss, uh, Mr. Reza Sitiawan, Deputy the Director of Simio Kitab in Science for inviting me as a speaker in today's webinar. Also, thanks to all attendees uh, or participants who attended the, the CK's webinar series today. Before continuing with our sharing today, let me introduce myself. Uh, maybe uh, I share my slide first. Okay, can you see all the slides? Yes, all right. it's clear. All right. Okay, um, before continuing with our sharing today, so let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Siti Ainu Mushida Binti Shamsuddin. I'm currently working uh, as a special education teacher at SMK Orchid Desa Kuala Lumpur. Uh, I have 14 years of experience as a teacher who has also taught biology, science, and mathematics subject. 
I am the recipient of the Special Education Outstanding Teacher Award, Kuala Lumpur Innovative Teacher Award, and 2021 Home Learning Teacher Award. So without wasting time, uh, let me continue with my sharing today. All right. Uh, my sharing today is under the topic Bringing Learning to Life, Immersive Experiential Learning Simulation for Online and Blended Learning. So if there are any questions, you can continue to ask in the chat room or can ask at the end of the sharing uh, session later as um, uh, Mr. Lokman already uh, <coughs> tell just now. All right. So referring uh, to this topic, what does bringing uh, learning to life means? So bringing learning to life is a practical view of the everyday learning that can happen in a classroom. As teachers, we have the unique privilege to lead our classroom uh, and we have the ability, autonomy and choice to influence and help shape opportunities for greater amounts of exploration and thinking to occur. Especially when it comes to mathematics and numeracy, teaching and learning. Well, to be honest, I could remember when I was a student wanting to know why we were studying something and wishing to know the connections and see it in real life. But I never got that opportunity. I became a master of making excuses and finding ways to escape classes. So that is the big reason why we need to bring learning to life via immersive experiential learning simulation. Okay, next slide. Experiential learning uh, is the way you learn to talk, to walk, to eat, and accomplish just about every major function of living. So there is no debate that learning through experience is a powerful way to retain information. Research has long shown uh, that everyone learns differently. Some people retain inform information very well when they hear it. Others when they read it. Uh, some people are visual learners and others learn by doing. So experiential learning allow uh, an individual to learn in a way that incorporates multiple sense at once and enables multiple learning styles simultaneously. So for this reason, learning via experience tends to leave a more lasting impact than other methods. So experiential learning, however, is not always uh, practical. It would be uh, unsuitable to, uh, to have chemistry students to learn dangerous chemical reaction by performing them. So it can be dangerous, expensive or impractical to teach all facets of a skill trait by trying things out. Furthermore, in the current pandemic situation, uh, it is very difficult for students to collaborate, to carry out science experiments in the laboratory because we have to take into account the SOP of the pandemic, such as social distancing, and this is where the power of simulations comes into play. <clears throat> okay, sim uh, simulation. Simulation is an interactive technique that re replicates experience and evokes substantial uh, aspect of the real world for practice uh, and or assessment of a practical and knowledge. So simulation is a flexible tool, scenario uh, can be tweaked and replay it as necessary within a session to provide the opportunity to address specific needs of individual learners. So the activities carry out resembles the real thing. Examples of simulation are play roles, games, and uh, also use of a model. So simulation allow for experiential learning within a controlled and safe environment and real world behavior and situation can be modeled in the computer, providing a true to life experience. Simulation becomes not only a catch all for different learning types, but a flagship for experiential learning. So through simulation and experiencing what they are learning, these students will be better prepared, more skills and able uh, to tackle their trade head on. 
So no more bricks in the walls of tomorrow. But so, but how can we implement uh, experiential learning simulation in pandemic situation that limit face-to-face -face learning with relatively strict COVID-19 SOPs? Especially for science uh, teacher who can uh, who can uh, uh, for science teacher how can students uh, carry out science experiment in a safe uh, environment? So let we continue to the next slide. So these are the amounts of uh, problems that are often faced by teachers, especially science teacher uh, in carrying out experiential learning such as experiment or practicals in the current situation. First, many experiments in science subject need to be performed by students. So how to implement it all in a short time? How can I perform the prescript experiments and activities in remote learning? And if the student is unable to perform the experiment face to face, so what is an effective way to expose students to scientific skills without practicality? So how to solve this problem? As a solution to the problem faced by these teachers, uh, we discuss and come up with an innovation in teaching by using practical simulation and virtual lab through blended learning methods. The blended learning method is implemented by combining flipped classroom and practical simulation. This practical simulation can be performed online or offline and the implementation of practical simulation online is by using application or web browser, uh, also known as a virtual lab. While offline practical simulation are implemented through practical video recording called home lab. And to ensure that, that students have the interest, interest to perform the task, so this task is given to students in the form of uh, simulation. Um, simulation games or role play games known as class craft. Thus, the combination of these three simulation methods form immersive experiential learning simulation. And in the next slide, I will explain in more details about each of the simulation methods mentioned. All right, the first uh, simulation method is through the use of virtual lab, okay, virtual lab or interactive simulation. So there are two web browsers that provide interactive simulation that students can explore on their own at home or at school through teacher guidance. Okay, one of them is FAT uh, simulation, FAT interactive simulation. So I want to ask who here has ever heard or ever used this FAT simulation? And maybe you can write your, uh, if any uh, of the teachers are accustomed to using Nearpod application uh, in online teaching, they may be uh, familiar with this um, usage FAT interactive simulation. So uh, this is the address, okay, uh, uh, address for FAT uh, interactive simulation, uh, fat.colorado.edu. Okay, FAT interactive simulation is a portal built by instructors of the University of Colorado. Inside the FAT portal, there are more than 100 interactive simulations available in this FAT portal, included STEM subjects, uh, uh, such as physics, we have chemistry, maths, earth science, and biology. So here I will show some examples of the use of fat trap simulation in health, especially the implementation of experiment or online practice. So among the examples of the interesting interactive simulation, and we will explore today if, uh, if we have enough time. So this is the first one. So the first is uh, an experimental simulation under the topic of density. So maybe we can refer to this video. 
Okay. Uh, this video is not no sounds. Eh? So as you can see here, we can change the type of materials used in this experiment. Okay, this is the materials for density. Can change uh, here. Okay, such as wood, or maybe we can change to styrofoam or ice. So uh, we can uh, observe the density of each materials. So students uh, can observe and measure the density of each materials, and they can also control the mass and the volume. Okay, the mass and volume of the materials, as you can see here. Okay, other than that, students can compare the density of different types of materials, such as wood and aluminium, and it can control the mass and the volume. And at the comparison, so students can learn the balance in the level system, okay, uh, uh, with the trial and error method in which the students can change the position. As you can see in this video, uh, they can change the position of the object, the left and the right set, uh, side of the level so that uh, it is balanced. Then they also can use the ruler function on this simulation to measure the distance between the object and the fulcrum. We have ruler function here, uh, so they can uh, measure the distance between the object and the fulcrum. Okay, moreover, uh, in this um, simulation, students can also perform experimental simulation using other sub uh, object. And one more, the interesting thing in this simulation is the game. We have game. Okay, this is the game. Um, in this video shows an interactive uh, simulation game under the topic of balancing act. So they can explore, they can, uh, uh, they can use this as a assessment for them. All right, that's it. Okay, we have another examples. Uh, in fact, interactive simulation that I think is uh, it is interesting. Okay, and, uh, this example is a simulation called John Travolta. Maybe because it used John Travolta image, uh, I guess. So this is a simple physics experiment. Okay, uh, maybe we can start this video. Uh, this is simple physics experiment explaining the presence of static electricity. So when John Travolta feet uh, were wrapped on a rock, uh, this action would produce an electrostatic force that would be carried uh, then of iron, it would produce an electric current which caused uh, an electric shock uh, to his hand. So this answers the question, why do we sometimes feel like we are getting an electric shock when we push a trolley in a supermarket? So we go to the next examples. Okay, this one, uh, we will look at, uh, we will refer to the uh, example of simulation in energy change. Okay. Okay. This you? is a FET simulation yes, called Energy right. Forms and Changes. One button to allow you to cool down two devices. You're also going to take the thermometer and you're going to place it on the iron. It's going to turn gray. It's going to turn red. Place it on the outside of the water. It's going to turn blue and it's going to be on the olive oil and it's going to turn yellow. So some of the things you can do with this simulation to get started is uh, let's take the water and I don't know the olive oil and let's heat them both up. 
And as we begin to heat, we notice some things happening with the energy symbols. There seems to be some movement. And we also notice the temperature, the thermometer, rising. Now, if we don't want to heat things up, we can cool things down. And there's also movement when you cool things down with energy symbols and movement on the thermometer. So we don't want to do olive oil anymore. We don't want to do water anymore. Let's forget the liquids. Let's look at solids. We can take solids, a solid piece of brick and a solid piece of iron, and we can heat those up and notice the energy symbols. Or we can cool those down and notice energy symbols. We can also, if we wanted to, take a piece of iron and drop it in water, or a piece of brick and drop it in olive oil. We can switch it around. So what I want you to do in this explore activity is to have fun. Heat things up, cool things down, notice the energy symbols, notice the thermometer, the temperature rising and falling. And every time you want to reset, you just click this button here and you're back to the beginning. But make sure every time you reset that you click those energy symbols, you link the heaters, and you put All a right. thermometer on. So uh, we have uh, another uh, so have uh, video, continuation of the previous video. Maybe we can skip All here. Right. Today we're going to continue on changes. Admit. Today we're going to click on systems systems has a variety of choices for you and the first thing i would do is click on energy symbols and that way you can see the gray is going to be mechanical the blue is electrical the red is for thermal or heat the yellow is for light and the e is for chemical all of the forms of energy that we should be familiar with now so to start, you simply, for the water pipe, you pull the pin, and we notice that gray E's, or mechanical energy, is being converted to electrical energy, which is being converted again into mechanical energy as the fan spins around. So I'm gonna hit reset really quickly click on energy symbols, and just show you some of the choices. You have water, you have light from the sun with no clouds or lots of clouds, and you can see what that does. We have a teapot, which is gonna give us thermal energy when we crank it up, or release the heat. We also have a girl on a bike and you can control the speed which she pedals from not pedaling at all to pedaling faster and if you're really paying attention you see that she has energy inside of her so i'm going to reset this again and not only do we have a wheel but you have a choice of solar panel and not just water but an incandescent light, the old fashioned light bulb that has a filament in the middle, a newer version of a light bulb, the twisty one, which is called a CFL, and you can also put a fan blade. So you're going to explore the different varieties of energies and the transfer of energy based upon your choices. And as you explore the simulation, you're going to complete this Google Doc with a brief description, each picture, what's happening. Describe the energy transformation that you see in this particular picture. So as you go through the Google Doc, I would set up these pictures and see what's happening. That way you can describe the transformations here. So I okay, you as you it. can see, uh, yeah. at the end of the cool. video, there are uh, handouts uh, which provided in this uh, fat interactive simulation. So we can use that handout, uh, give to the students before they try the fat interactive simulation uh, and explore it by themselves. So maybe we can continue to the next slide. 
Okay. Apart from using the fact interactive simulation uh, platform, so uh, experiential learning simulation can also be implemented through the use of another uh, web browser called Cam Collective. Cam Collective provides online uh, simulation of a chemistry lab and it is designed to help students link chemical computations uh, with authentic laboratory chemistry. So the lab allows students to select from hundreds uh, of standard reagent or aqueous and manipulate them, them in a manner resembling a real lab. And this is the Chem Collective site address, okay, chemcollective.org slash vlabs. So this is one of examples uh, of example of virtual lab overview provided by Chem Collective. So we can choose apparatus and substances from the stock room provided. Okay, uh, maybe we can watch this video first. Welcome to the new Chem Collective Virtual Laboratory. This version is HTML5 based and will run on most devices. The stock room explorer is shown on the left with menus in the problem name in the upper panels. Clicking on the problem name displays information about this activity. In the Stockroom Explorer, use the tabs at the top to select between reagents, glassware, and tools. Clicking on a group expands or collapses the items inside. To bring an item out of the Stockroom, single-click on it. This puts the item on the desktop and information about the item appears in the Solution Information panel. To return to the Stockroom, click on the Collapse Stockroom panel at the top of the pane. I'll get ready for a titration by using the glassware menu to get a burette. I'll also get an indicator and a sample of the unknown acid I'm going to titrate. When a flask is selected, you can view detailed information about it and how connected, and the transfer window is activated. The transfer window has three tabs, precise, significant figures, and realistic, for each of the transfer modes in the virtual lab. To transfer a solution in precise mode, type the desired amount and click pour. Notice the updated information in the solution information panel. When your transfer is complete, click the X button at the top right of the transfer window or drag the flasks apart. Next, I'll transfer a sample of the unknown acid solution to a new flask. To do this, I'll drag a 25 mil pipette onto the sample of unknown acid. Notice the pipettes have two transfer buttons, one for withdrawing solution into the pipette and one for pouring solution from the pipette. Here, I'll demonstrate the significant figures transfer mode by selecting the sig fig tab. For this mode, I will enter 25.00 and click withdraw. I can now drag the pipette onto the destination flask. I'll type 25 again into the box and click pour. Notice the error when incorrect significant figures are used. Finally, I will add indicator to my solution. This time I'll demonstrate the realistic transfer mode by selecting the realistic tab. In this mode, solutions are transferred by holding down the pour button. Note that the longer the pour button is held down, the greater volume of solution is transferred. By right-clicking on a selected flask or through the Edit menu, you can perform a number of tasks on a flask, such as rename, duplicate, or change the thermal properties. Here, we'll rename the new flask and then make an additional duplicate copy as a backup. We are now ready to perform our titration. We begin by dragging the burette onto the sample of unknown acid. For this example, we will use the precise transfer mode. When you perform the titration yourself, you may use any of the available transfer options or the one specified by your instructor. Notice how the volume, pH, and temperature change as the solutions are mixed. When you have finished with a piece of glassware, you can remove it by right-clicking and selecting Remove. Additionally, you can select Clear Workbench by right-clicking on right, the workbench uh, to remove all so items. So this is the examples like the uh, of experiments of the lab. that can be used Please in virtual labs. Then how, how uh, can we use Welcome the virtual lab? Uh, this is the such as a tutorial for us, uh, maybe for our students uh, to use virtual lab uh, correctly. So we go to the next slide. All right. <clears throat> Uh, now we move on to the second method of immersive uh, experiential the learning new. simulation. Uh, and the second method uh, is through home lab or practical video simulation. Okay, this home lab is more or less uh, the same as the project based learning, but it focuses uh, on the experiments or practicals involving science that can be implemented by students at home. 
Okay, as an example, this is the topic uh, under the topic water and solution, science form two in Malaysian curriculum, theme maintenance and continuity of life, content standard, physicals and properties of water, learning standards, uh, conduct experiments and communicate about the process of water evaporation in daily life. So let's we look at the, uh, another slide, the steps in implementation of, of home lab. Okay, so these are the steps in the implementation of home lab and the first steps uh, is to get students ideas about evaporation through brainstorming. Uh, maybe we can give a handout, okay, we provide a handout for students. Then the second step is that students are asked to watch a practical simulation video. Uh, given by the teacher to study the factors that influence the process of evaporation in uh, by using the practical simulation video. And the next step is to have students uh, to explain the factors uh, that influence the process of uh, evaporation and draw conclusion. So this, uh, then the students will suggest ways to conduct experiments at home. And at this stage, is, uh, it is called home lab. Uh, but not all experiments are suitable to be performed at home. Uh, some require apparatus uh, and materials that are difficult to find at home um, or dangerous to use without teacher supervision. Thus, teachers need to encourage students to think creatively and critically so that uh, they can give an idea of what is the appropriate experiments to be implemented at home and, and the way to conduct that experiments. So as evidence, okay, as evidence of the implementation, we can ask students uh, to record the implementation steps uh, of the experiments through video recording. And the last step involves assessment, uh, such as quizzes, worksheet, uh, and so on. Maybe handout. Okay, next. Sorry, I think, okay. Okay, this is an example uh, of a practical simulation video. Sorry, uh, maybe I already skipped it. Previous. All right, this, this is an example of a practical simulation video um, that students can watch as a reference before they perform a home lab uh, or experiments at home. So let's watch this video before we continue to the next slide. This is just a, an example, so maybe I will skip it. Take a glass and a plate. Pour equal amount of water in both. Put them out in the sun for an hour. Observe what happens. In which of the two does water evaporate faster? The water evaporates faster from the plate because plate has larger So by using this video practicals, the okay, practical simulation video, the uh, they can the learn first before they evaporation. do it by themselves in Take home lab. Glass and a plate. Pour equal amount of water in both. So maybe we can continue to the next Put slide. Them out in the sun for an hour. Okay. Um, this is an example of a home lab video recording performed by students at home. Uh, so let's watch maybe a part of it. So to get more examples of suitable experiments implemented at home, teachers can refer to the Anjung Ilmu Guru Perak blogspot. 
uh, this is the website okay through this address okay this is the address of the website so in this portal there are many home lab video recordings performed by students and teachers all right next slide so <clears throat> once we know and understand about the uh, two methods of how we implement this experiential learning practical simulation so we also uh, we also need to know uh, how effective methods are for us to motivate students to perform this practical or task just here i would like to share one of the best platform or application that meet all the criteria we need to motivate uh, motivate to uh, them uh, motivate students to complete a practical to complete a practical simulation or assignments that we provide and the application i use is classcraft okay uh, maybe some of us know uh, this application so classcraft use the motivating gaming principles to create a positive students experience with time saving tools classcraft put students in control of their learning process uh, reinforce co collaboration uh, streamlines classroom management and builds a better learning classroom management uh, sorry, uh, it can build a better learning experience and this class craft application can be used by downloading uh, on a smartphone uh, or via a web browser. So here I will share briefly how this class craft works and what are the specialties or advantages of this class craft, uh, class craft game. All right. So among the specialties or advantages or, or maybe interesting things okay, related to this class craft is students can choose their own character and physical appearance to represent them as, a, as their avatar. So there are three types uh, of avatar or characters that they can choose from, namely guardian, okay, mage and healer. Okay, each of which has its own advantage and guardians, guardians are the game's protectors. Uh, they use their powers to defend their teammates from damage in the game. Match use their powers to restore their teammates' um, action points, okay, uh, or we call AP, so they can continue using their power regularly. Healers, healers restore their teammates' health points so they don't uh, fall or lose all their health power. So as you can see here, for Guardian, Guardian uh, for Mitch, Mitch have a uh, high uh, action point so they can help their teammate uh, when their teammates has less action points. Next. All right. In this class craft, students uh, will be divided into teams and each team must have these three characters. Okay, or avatar so they can collaborate with each other and help to protect, defend or restore points of other friends in the group. This is an example of a class craft team formed by my students and from this picture uh, we can observe the characteristic of different avatar. Okay, this is because the points earned by students in this class craft game will allow them to buy accessories or powers uh, for their avatar. So the more points accumulated, the higher the level, okay, as you can see here, the higher the level and the more awesome their avatar. So they can also choose pets actually, okay, this is pets. They can also choose pets to help them gain uh, gold points in this game. So how do you get points in this game? So, uh, if we observe here, okay, there are plus and minus button. So this uh, button will be controlled by the teacher to add and subtract student points based on the attitude or behavior shown by the students in class. So click on the plus button. Okay, we can click on the plus button to give points uh, for positive behavior. And we also can kick, uh, click the minus button for negative behavior. Okay, next. Uh, the teacher, uh, as the 
admin okay as the admin of this game can set a reward in the form of experience point or xp for each positive behavior shown by students so these are examples of positive behavior that i i have set for my students uh, and if they show one of the behavior in this setting then i will add the points as shown Okay, for examples, completing assignments or activity, uh, they will get 150 XP. Being respectful to others, they will get 150 XP. So uh, you will gain uh, XP power, uh, XP point or experience point by uh, positive, show the positive behavior in the class. Okay, next. Okay, on the other hand, if students show negative behavior, they will subject to a penalty uh, set by the teacher and teacher can also set the number of health points that will be deducted. Okay, if a student commit the negative behavior listed, for example, uh, being rude to a classmate, so it will deduct negative two health points uh, and being unparticipate, uh, participate in the class, so they will deduct negative one. So this one uh, we can set by ourselves by the teacher as an admin of the class craft game. All right. In this class craft, assignments are given to students through quests. Okay, the student's avatar will travel from one location to another according to the assigned task. So each location will be assigned task to, uh, will be assigned task to be performed, and this display shows some of the quests I have built uh, for my students to perform tasks. For example, we have four tasks here: science and magic challenge, the lost sprite. Okay, uh, which uh, we just give a name for this task. Okay, so that it will be become more interesting. Okay, next. Okay, this quest will be divided into several other location. Okay, according to the number of tasks given. For example, this is an assignment uh, under the science. Sorry. Okay, in this class craft, uh, we have four tasks. Okay, as you can see here, we have four tasks. Start by introduction. Okay, then we have four tasks or four challenge, uh, challenge for students. So next. Okay, this is the science and magic challenge that I, will, uh, I give to the students. And so students will be traveling from one location to another starting with introduction until all tasks uh, or all challenge are completed. Okay, this is an example of the introduction, uh, introduction section in a quest created by the teacher. Uh, to be more interesting, uh, this quest can be presented uh, in the form of storytelling, depending on the creativity of the teachers. For example, we can uh, read here, okay, I'm Votan the wise, and I will guide you in this in this difficult time so uh, you will face several tasks in your path if you are successful big rewards are waiting for you if you fail i hope you will learn from your mistake so this is the story uh, the simple story that we can give to our students okay next <clears throat> Okay, this is an example of a task section. Okay, in this section, uh, the teacher can enter the assignment link. Okay, assignment link, we can give an assignment link or the class graph to another platform like Google Classroom. So next, there is also a discussion section. Okay, uh, you can see here a uh, discussion section where in this section, students can discuss uh, with other students to complete assignments. Okay, uh, here, to make the adventure in the completing this assignment uh, more interesting, teachers can create a story and convey the students' assignments through that story. So here, I share an example of a story that I created uh, for this class craft quest. Okay, maybe we can look at another, another slide. Okay, this is the adventure. Adventures uh, in this uh, quest, okay, uh, just examples of the adventure. We start by Pengembaraan Bermula, okay, uh, Archa Argus, okay, maybe we can skip 
to the next slide. Okay, so this is an example uh, for a track student to complete the assignment. Okay, I give uh, them by create a story. Okay, create a story and convey student to uh, the assignment through that story. Okay, as you can see here, together you follow Richard, uh, Richard uh, across the mountain. The air is clear now that the blizzard has settled and the snow lays speak glisten in the sunlight. So, uh, this uh, story created by uh, by teacher, okay, uh, so that students can read it, okay, uh, part of the uh, advantages in this class graph. Okay, next. Okay, this is a class spe uh, specific setting, so we can set whether student will complete uh, the task. Okay, sorry, uh, setting next. Okay, this one. Okay, this is class specific setting. We can set whether student will complete a, either self uh, piece uh, or complete assignment with other uh, students. So if not through self piece, then the student who has completed one assignment has to wait for another student to complete uh, all the as, uh, assignment first. Then he can continue with another assignment. So we can also set due dates. As you can see here, we can set due dates and rewards. Okay, we have rewards here in the form of XP for each task. Okay, this is uh, one more uh, interesting things about this class graph. Okay. <clears throat> okay, apart from that, among the other advantages of this class graph is uh, uh, interesting tools okay that can be used by teachers in the classroom uh, random picker for example random picker is a tool that can be used to randomly select students name to answer the question then we have uh, random events okay random events uh, is uh, are like a poison box that is used to select an event or program at random for students to do. The volume meter is a measure of the student's voice limit in the classroom. So this aims to control noise in the class. And meanwhile, formative review is an interactive quiz or test that can be given to students. And kudos, kudos is uh, in turn serve as a parking lot, lot for leaving message or words, uh, or, uh, words of praise. Okay, uh, last but not least, class craft provide a certificate to every student registered with class craft. Okay, uh, and next is a short video okay, to show the overall, uh, overall use of a class craft in teaching and learning. So, but, but uh, I don't know whether we have a time. So maybe, maybe uh, we can continue to this video first. Can we, Mr. Lokman? Yes, please. Okay, please. all right, all right. Welcome to Classcraft. Classcraft turns your class into a game that'll last the whole school year. You'll be playing in teams as different characters. By working together, you'll level up and earn powers that give you real benefits in class. Let's take a look at the game rules. Your teacher is now the game master. Whenever they see you doing good actions in class, like answering a question correctly or being helpful to others, they'll reward you with experience points or XP. Earning XP will grant you powers. These are special abilities that help you on homework and tests, give your team a boost, or provide you with other cool perks in class. You can use powers as long as you have enough action points or AP. These regenerate a little every day at midnight. Mages also have powers that can restore extra AP too. But be careful, if you break the class rules, you could lose health points or HP and even fall in battle. When this happens, you'll receive a sentence or consequence and cause damage to the rest of your team. That's why it's so important for your team to work together. By supporting each other, you'll all succeed. Let's start playing by choosing your character. Will you be a mage who has enough energy to make sure everybody can use their power? The warrior, the mighty defender of your team? Or the healer who's ready to revive your teammates at a moment's notice? In addition to earning great powers, you can also gain gold pieces or GP for leveling up and going above and beyond. 
These will let you customize the look and feel of your character. So, are you ready to start playing? Set up your characters and let the adventure begin. Sorry, okay. Uh, so, to learn and find out more about this class craft, you can visit uh, my channel, my YouTube channel, Check I Know's YouTube channel. So, there I, uh, there I have shared uh, step by step on how to use this class craft. Okay, so we have come to the end from what I shared a moment ago in conclusion. Uh, experiential learning simulation provides students with a whole, uh, a, host, uh, a host of uh, advantages and benefit. Some of this includes uh, the following. Personalized means simulation provide an engaging uh, student-centered uh, approach uh, to learning. Then we have multi-model. Uh, when learning, uh, learning this way enables students to employ multiple modes of learning and learning by doing provide the most effective uh, way to transfer short term knowledge into long term memory. Okay, virtual internship means simulation provide virtual internship that prepares students for what lies ahead when they must apply for job, jobs. So theory does not build a skilled uh, workforce application and long-term competency development does. Uh, and we have Plug and play, okay, plug and play simulation are extremely uh, easy to use. Uh, simulation, oh, sorry, this simulation are extremely easy to use, plug and play learning tools actually. And on demand, Okay, these experiences are accessible around the clock 24 7 times 7, uh, 24 times 7 times 365 around the globe. So, so students can assess session on their schedule, practice at their own speed, and reuse or practice as much as they need. And failing forwards means this interaction takes place in safe environment where the poten pot potential for teachable moment is high and the consequences for mistakes are very low. So uh, for the question and answer session, so I give it back to moderator to continue. Okay, thank you. Uh, very interesting uh, presentations lot of interactive um, learning media. Uh, games, fed simulation, also class craft. Um, and now I think uh, I opened the discussion <clears throat> station. So I invite first uh, the participants who join on who uh, joining on the Zoom uh, to ask directly. Uh, if you want to ask directly, please uh, click the uh, raise hand. Uh, although. So there are several questions actually. I think uh, it's the chance for you to ask directly to the uh, participants, eh, sorry, to the speaker, because I think it's it's um, very interesting. So please, participants, let me check first. Okay, I think uh, the participants are so shy. About okay, so um, while I, we are waiting for the participants uh, to ask directly, oh, sorry, there is Mr. Aji Widianto. So please, Mr. Aji, unmute your microphone and uh, ask directly to Miss Aino. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Lukman. I yes. want to ask about uh, the what is the name of the application do you take for chemistry? Oh, virtual chemistry, lab? Uh, uh, virtual lab, virtual lab, Com uh, chem collective. Okay, uh, maybe I can write down the... The name, uh, yeah? Uh, yes, the, yes. Wait, eh? uh, I, want, I want to ask about the application. Is it free to use or we have to pay or... Because we, I want to use it as the practical exam for our students. Okay. Also, Actually, all the uh, application that I show to you, uh, all is free. All is free. Uh, no need to buy or maybe you can, but you can upgrade it. Uh, I think uh, in a, a basic, basic modes uh, for free, 
uh, is just enough for our students. Hmm. Okay, uh, maybe can I can you... give you uh, the link for the yes. virtual lab. <clears throat> okay, I paste it uh, in the chat room. Okay, uh, you get it, uh, Aji, uh, Mr. Aji? Yes, Can you get, okay. yeah, okay. this is, so it's basically, it's free to use and can we use as the, the tools for our student because I want to give also the link to our students so they can practice it at home. Uh, yes, yes, uh, so you can explore uh, by using this CAM Collective. Uh, then in YouTube, I think uh, many tutorials regarding this CAM Collective site. Uh, for uh, for V labs, we call it virtual labs. Do you have there are any, many tutorials? Yeah. Do you have any handout for to use? <laughs> okay, for Maybe. Chem Collective, uh, I, yeah. Chem Collective no handout, but we can give it. Uh, we can create by ourselves and give it to students because Chem Collective uh focusing on the experiment uh in chemistry. So maybe you can uh, give a procedure of the experiments to students so they can uh, use that as a reference for them to use this virtual lab. Yeah, yeah, thank but you but so in, much. in fact, interactive simulation, we have, uh, they provided with a uh, handout okay, to give to the students. So we can explore it and we can download uh, the handout from fact interactive simulation. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, Mrs. City. Okay. It's very useful for us in this okay. pandemic situation. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank okay. you, Mr. Lokman. Yeah. Uh, in time, Mr. Aji, and thank you for the answers, Miss I know. So uh, one more, I think. Uh, anyone want to ask directly again? Um, so uh, if no, so I will... Uh, Read the questions on the chat box. There is uh, questions from Mr. Abdul Fattah. Uh, the questions is, do you use the handout provided by FAT? I think it's, it's for FAT simulations. Yes. Or uh, you, de you develop handout by yourself as guidance for your students? Okay. Okay. Some of the fat interactive simulation uh, already provided the handout. Okay. Uh, so usually I just use that uh, already provided there. Uh, but if uh, it is not suitable uh, to maybe uh, some of our students uh, regarding the level is not same. So uh, we will create ourselves. Okay. I will create ourself, uh, myself uh, for the handout. Just, just depending on the level lah, on the level. Oh, so it it, it depends on uh, the... It depends on the, the level. Uh, okay. But mostly, mostly uh, the question in this handout uh, suitable to our students, okay. especially uh, secondary schools. Okay. And so um, I think uh, that's... Uh, the questions. The next question is from Miss Etiati, I think, from SMPN twenty five Bandung. The class craft is very interesting, Miss City. How long you prepare your story storyline until the game ready to play by students? And do you have any suggestions about step by step to preparing the class craft? Okay. Uh, so how long? How long? Uh, maybe. Um, uh, usually just about a uh, a day only, but um. In class craft, actually, they already provided uh, the story. You can just uh, uh, take the, uh, you can just use the story and uh, change it uh, to suit your subject, to suit your uh, task that you want to give to the students. So maybe uh, we can explore more uh, about class craft uh, because uh, uh, class craft, uh, many, many teachers in, that using the class craft, they uh, usually they use the story, they just uh, save the story in the class craft. So we can use it because that is a public, public share. So we can use their story and we change it to suit our suitables, uh, to suit our students. And okay. for the step by step, uh, maybe, uh, uh, siapa yang tanya tadi? Uh, 
uh, what is the name Miss of Miss Etieti. Okay, yeah. maybe uh, you can uh, go to the uh, to my YouTube channel. Okay, uh, that I share step by step uh, of using this class graph in uh, whether in uh, students' uh, view and uh, our teachers' view. And I think uh, in the Classcraft uh, YouTube channel, we have a Classcraft YouTube channel. There, there are many uh, tutorials step by step. Uh, that, so, if you want to uh, to look uh, or to watch uh, in an uh, English version, you can go to Classcraft YouTube channel. Uh, there, there are ve uh, many many tutorials uh, step by step that you can uh, watch and uh, being the guidance for you to use this Classcraft. Okay, so uh, I think that's all from the Zooms. I have one question from the uh, channel, I think. I'd like to know about the response from students and also could, uh, this, this, I think that's the first one. And also could you tell me, is there any improvement of students' achievement after students experience the experiential le learning, I think? Okay. Um... In this experiential learning, uh, for example, in fact, interactive simulation or maybe in uh, virtual lab. So I use this uh, task uh, in a class graph. I provide uh, the task in a class graph. So uh, students uh, mostly, uh, they, can, they will complete all the tasks because they want to gain the level, high level in the class graph. So that's why... Um, I share for you the class graph at the end of the uh, 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 give you to improve your students by um, giving a motivation for them to complete all the tasks given. Uh, so I think, um, so for improvement, yes, of course, uh, there are uh, an improvement for my students, uh, especially, actually, I, I'm, I'm teaching uh, special needs students, special needs students. And I was a teacher, uh, a biology teacher, uh, but for my special needs student, class craft uh, is very useful for them, uh, especially in behavior, in improvement, uh, uh, in, in, to improve their behavior, uh, to gain more positive behavior in a class, especially. Uh, okay, uh, thank you, Miss I know, so I think uh, that uh, there is the last questions. Um, before we close, do you have any closing statement, Miss Aino, uh, for the, everyone? Closing statement? Uh, so there's yeah. no more question? Yes. Okay. So uh, for the closing, okay, uh, thanks to the organizers once again. Thanks to the organizer and also thanks to um, Dr. Suhara from... Uh, uh, JPWPKL Kuala Lumpur for this opportunity for me to share ideas and knowledge in this great, uh, great webinar program. And thanks again to all the participants who attended to the webinar from the beginning. Sorry if there is a lack uh, throughout uh, knowledge sharing today. Uh, hopefully the ideas and the knowledge that I shared today can be utilized by all. And until we meet again, inshallah. Okay, thank you so much, Miss Aino Mursida, for your sharing, for your insights on science teaching and learning. And then, dear participant, this is the conference webinar. Before, I would like to invite all the participants to create an account at our course information system at course.kitabinscience.org to get access to our upcoming programs. And then I would like to inform you about the attendance form and evaluation form. We have shared the link to access the atten attendance form on the chat box. Please fill in the attendance form as it is one of the requirements for you to get e-certificate. We will send the certificate to you to your email to your email by 10 working days at the latest. 
And as I said, please also fill in the evaluations form at the link that we share on Zoom and YouTube chat box. Finally, on behalf of Simeo Kitab in Science, I would like to extend our gratitude for the speaker, Miss Aino Murshida. Uh, uh, I, uh, I hope we can uh, meet again yeah. in the next uh, uh, agenda. And thank you for all participants for joining this webinar. We wish you well. Have thank you so much for me. Thank you very much, Miss. I know. Thank you. Thank you for for joining this uh, webinar. Thank you. Yes. Okay, thank you. Don't forget oh, to fill in the attendance form. Yes. And make sure your identity, your email is correct. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lukman. You're welcome. Okay. I'll see you all. Thank you very much. And wassalamualaikum.